This is the one mistake all golfers make, myself included, until been working on it in the last six weeks, in terms of making a significant technical change. 191 ball speed. I've got it on camera with a standard length driver. And even though I tell all my clients to do this, even myself included, found it very difficult to let it all go just so that I could make the changes necessary to, well, swing the club faster. And for the longest time, this was the top, the most I could ever achieve. Couldn't go any faster. Even after six months of gym training, we only added four miles an hour or so to that. And over the last six weeks, we've added another six purely by getting rid of that silly mistake. And even though I'll talk about the bits that have helped me to gain club head speed, that doesn't necessarily equal distance. And I've made separate videos to this showing exactly how much further you can hit it, potentially swinging the club slower. And even if you're watching this video thinking, Simon, I don't wanna gain more club head speed, I wanna make a significant other change to my swing, well, keep watching because this video is going to be just as important to you as well. And to be honest, it was naive for me not to notice why I wasn't gaining any more club head speed. Even though I felt stronger and more balanced and I was doing all the right things, I just wasn't willing to sacrifice the one thing that I've been coveted more in my golf career than anything else. And it's the one reason why a lot of you guys, if you're trying to change your swing path into the ball, it happens in your practice swing. You can bring that club on the inside, yet you can't do it out on the golf course. And that's because centeredness of strike, hitting the ball out the middle of the face, is such a major part when it comes to getting the ball up in the air, getting the right amount of spin, getting a decent amount of distance. And to be honest, for you guys that have just started this game, it's easy to hit down on the ball. It's easy to hit it out the middle of the face when you come over the top and you have very little weight transfer. All of us learn to hit the golf ball out the middle, up in the air, by doing that. And if you're in a pressured environment, playing with mates, potentially in a competition, and you're wondering why do I always fade it when I'm out on the golf course, it's because that is playable. That gives you the result, that keeps you close to where your handicap is, because the alternative is having a nice in to out path, which you've been working on, but then you fat it and that's not gonna help anyone. And it's why this room has been so beneficial for myself and my lessons, because when I'm working on someone's swing, not only are we videoing it so they can see what's happening, we're only ever working on one number, not all of them. And especially at the start, definitely not this one. And that's why for me, it was so stupid and obvious that I didn't realize this when I was doing it for myself and I was trying to gain more club head speed. I was too focused on the result. I was too focused on the distance. And when you're trying to increase your club head speed or move your swing path or sort out your angler attack, whatever it might be, results are pretty much the last thing you should be worried about in the short term. And it's for that reason I always structure my clients' practice sessions on the driving range and doing five shots with the drill, the head cover, or whatever it might be for what particular part of the game we're trying to learn. And then five shots where you are result-based, and then five shots where you're not, and then five shots where you are result-based. So hopefully they merge when you're out on the golf course. So rather than coming across the ball by 10 degrees, when you just walk up and you still think you're swinging the same, it's now five degrees. And then potentially the angle attack, you've been very steep, hitting down on it eight degrees. And then you go on the golf course and you're only coming down into it five degrees. One thing you have to learn is trying to make technical changes on the golf course will not equal good results and we have to trade one for another because the swing right there took me a long time to learn and as I'm warming up and getting faster that's not going to find the middle of the face so let's talk about the technical changes I've made in my swing to obviously add more club head speed and this doesn't mean it's going to add more distance to your overall shots and it definitely doesn't mean more consistency but again, it reinforces the bit that I practice and tell everyone to practice without results, not worried about sentinel strike. Work on one specific part of your game as you go on. 
because ultimately, if I was to go on the golf course tomorrow and go and play nine holes, my club head speed would probably be more like this. Why? Because it's enough and it gets me down the middle of the golf course. And let's be honest, especially in England, a lot of the golf courses I play, 280 yards carry and 320 yards total is well more than enough to cut down a lot of those places. But I want to compete in long drive. I want to break 140 miles an hour club head speed. I want to break the 200 mile an hour barrier. And with that, there has to be some technical changes. For a lot of you golfers, a lot of senior golfers, that let's say only hit their drive 150 yards total. One of the big rules in golf is that you don't want to break this left arm. This helps in our consistency. One lever is very consistent, i.e. putting. Yeah, as golfers, we need the second lever just so we can get enough club head speed to use the driver. For myself, which is probably the hardest one and I still can't do it now, is the third lever. Getting used to the idea of that club going even further, getting even more length in my swing. And when I do it, I gain more club head speed. Does it mean I'm gonna find the middle of the face more? No. Does it mean I need to practice it a lot more so I get used to it? Yes. Does it equal more club head speed? Well, when I time it right, it definitely does. And again, that's a very good example of me not worrying about the result. I thinned it, didn't head out of the middle. Yet, fastest swinger today at 126 miles an hour. And it's been the only way I've been able to break down my swing enough so that I can actually start working on the techniques that purely make me swing it faster. Number two is using the lower half of the body. It's been incredibly difficult for myself because I've been able to generate a decent amount of power just winding into my right side, not necessarily getting this vertical raise in the backswing and then pushing down into the ground at impact and then firing up with that left foot. Some of the greats of the long dry sport doing so well. Again, another timing issue. And the reason this is so important is because that's exactly what a lot of you guys will be feeling when you're just comfortable hitting a lot of your drivers like this. <laughs> Off the back foot gives you a semi-decent result. But because everything's back here, you're leaving power on the table. You wouldn't throw a tennis ball like this if you were to throw it to someone. You'd turn and you'd go towards it. The difference is a lot of you guys can find the middle of the face and get away with it when you just fall off that back foot, especially with the driver. Again, for myself, very uncomfortable. Never been used to it. So used to just finding the middle of the driver face because let's be honest, that does equate into more distance on a regular basis rather than hitting it out the toe or the heel. Yet again, just like the third lever, trying to get this vertical raise and trying to get that pressure into the ground to add that extra mile an hour, two miles an hour is necessary. And when you get the timing right, again, you get even more power delivered into the golf ball. Glad I did it and I actually hit it out of the middle. Goes to show the practice is somewhat working. 300 and oh, almost 350, that's almost a personal best with my PXG Gen 2. 128 miles an hour, 189 ball speed. The third one, which to be honest, will cater to a lot of you good golfers out there. And one of the reasons why you can't gain club head speed, but you have a decent level of distance. So therefore, is it even worth adding more club head speed? I have always been on the inside. I've always been this way. And to be honest, if you put me in a tournament tomorrow, I will hit big slinging hooks all day long. Yet, to add club head speed, give myself some room as well to allow my hands to pass my body. I've almost had to try and feel like hitting a fade, trying to get the feeling of the club going this way. And for so many of you guys that suffered with the slice for so much time, you've almost gone the other way. You're so used to bringing that shoulder down, bringing it on the inside, and being used to seeing very much that shape. Yet no matter how much you try, or let's say you try and swing faster, it just turns more and more into a snap hook. You almost want to do the opposite of a beginner. You almost want to feel like you're hitting more of a fade. When you're making big technical changes, don't worry about the result at first. Hit 100, 200, 
300 bad shots on the driving range because when you go on the golf course and you don't even think about it, trust me, you would have subconsciously made some significant changes into your overall golf game. Well, that wasn't the fastest one, but I've definitely hit it well. <laughs> There's me going, don't hit out the middle, and then I've just done that. <laughs> That's gonna be a good ball speed though. What is it? 191 ball speed. We have my standard length driver. We are nine miles an hour off, 200 miles an hour. A day I will very much be celebrating. Oh, I finally did it. I've got it on camera. It's the worst strike in the world. But I've finally done it. One, three, one with a standard length. Driver. Now, of course, that's not playable. Of course, that's not even going to help me in a long drive competition as my numbers are all over the place. But I'm pushing myself in one particular part of my game that I want to improve. Just like you see the long drive guys reaching 150, 155, 160 club head speeds. Yet, when they're on the grid, it's 140, 145. Hopefully, it means that when I'm on the grid, I'll be able to produce 135 miles an hour and be able to hit it somewhere straight down the middle. If you like this video, hopefully you like this one up here on the left hand side. Catch you guys there.